Hi guys, this is a special video just for you. This is because Dave mentioned that you really liked the video content we've done so far. This is actually an excerpt of a course we're building. And having taught, the reason for the course is to educate our medium and large size clients. Whilst they hire us to do this work for them, their marketing team would like to learn a lot of the stuff that we do, particularly the foundational knowledge. Digital marketing is something that is so relatively new, there's so much misinformation and so many fly-by-night practitioners that they really like to educate their staff. So I'm putting this together at the moment. I would love to get your feedback, um, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether this is something that you would give to your staff and whether you would pay for. Um, I would love it. But of course, the point of this video is for you to get value. So. I'll transition away from my asks and into a little bit of background. So firstly, let me tell you just a little bit about me. Um, my background was in search marketing originally with Fairfax, Australia's biggest media company, when they first realized that print media was dying and they needed to find new uh, sources of income. And I was the guy that they brought in to lead their company, their sub-company. It was a merger between them or a joint venture between them and Melbourne IT in search marketing and SEO. And so I got this fantastic background working directly with Google and Yahoo, because back in those days we were cultivating the whole industry. Well, what was interesting was that even those guys, even the guys in, in Google and Yahoo, didn't understand marketing. What they thought it was, was publicity. And it's not, it's never been about publicity. If you go to any university in the world and you say, if someone says, what's marketing? And you say, oh, it's advertising. You'll get laughed out of the room because it has never been that. Advertising is a very, very, very small component of marketing. What is marketing? Well, depending on which school you went to, it's either the four or the seven Ps. It's about the product, the price, the promotion, um, and your positioning. And all of that is a really fancy way of saying, do you really understand your customer? Now, I'll put this to you, and then I'm gonna get into the research, I promise. If I held a gun to your head right now, and said, you've got 24 hours to sell a product to your best friend. I don't care what it is, but you must sell it to him in every sense of the word sell, i.e. give him something that you know he wants and make him pay money for it. Could you do it? Well, I would love to meet the person that says no to that answer because I've never had it. Why? Well, why would this be such an easy challenge for me? Why would you for certain save your life? Well, because you know everything about your best friend. You know that um, they always lose their pen or they love good pens or something like that. You know that they love the color blue. You know that they always buy stuff that's leather because it feels good and a million other things that only you know about them because you know them so, so, so well. So needless to say, you would then give him a pen that was blue and leather and all the other things in the box that he likes, and you'd probably know how price sensitive he was. And he'd say, thank you. This is exactly what I wanted to buy. Now just think about that, because it seems so simple, so ridiculously simple. And that's what marketing is. Marketing is about understanding our customers' needs and wants so deeply and what makes them respond to messaging so deeply that it's easy. So the goal of digital marketing is not about publicity and about just pushing out what we are talking about. That, that would be crazy. Digital marketing is about learning. It's about testing. It's about me coming up to you and saying, Hey, I love your haircut, man. Tell me, where'd you get that? And seeing how you react. Now, little funny thing about myself. I'm an only child. I was always monkey see, monkey do. So I spent my whole life doing that. This 
whole way of communicating is, is all learned from testing it a million times terribly. Uh, some, in many instances, terribly and later very well. And one small example, I used to work in an outdoor furniture centre to put myself through university. And every, I used to keep a little scorecard of the different ways to approach people as they came into the store. And statistically, I can tell you nowadays, the single worst way to approach someone in a store is to say, hi, can I help you? And I can go into the science of why that elicits a fight or flight reaction and all the rest of it, but we'll skip all of that. What I can also tell you is that from that rigorous testing, I can tell you if you want to sell furniture in an outdoor furniture store, the single best approach you can have is, hey guys, how's the great furniture hunt going? And I know that sounds a little odd, but the goal of that line is to start a conversation. And then you can ask other follow-up questions like, oh, where have you been to? Are you going to go up to the other one? Oh, yeah, and no, I like their range too. What are you looking for? And boom, you're into the sales process. Digital marketing is no different. And so with a long uh, prelude, I'm sorry that that took so long, let me now get into talking about some of the stuff which is really important for us to know and recognize and what good marketing looks like. This is a little bit independent to what we're doing at the moment because it's a bit chicken and egg, but let's just put all of the, the current project off to the side. I will try to talk you through how we're applying that at the moment, but Rome wasn't built in a day. So whilst it would be great to get caught up and wrapped up in all of this stuff and say, let's do it all, let's take a methodical approach and let me show you wins, runs on the board so that you can then reinvest that money. That's, that's how we do it. Okay, let's launch into it. So, and I'll, I'll sorry, very quickly, this is never how I would present to somebody. This is actually just my own notes. Um, in the future, I'll give you a, if you'd like it, a much more professional version. So, sorry, let's launch into it. <laughs> Some really interesting data. In, in business to business sales, 50% of the buying journey happens before the buyer reaches out to the vendor. And 45% of that time is spent doing independent research. Only 17% is spent with the supplier. So we've got this idea that people will just reach out to us and then we get to sell to them. But that is in no way the case. In fact, I mean, if you look at these different uh, breakdowns by Gartner, you've got 18% of researching independently offline. You've got 27% of their time online. You've got them looking for all of the answers to all of the questions that they would be able to get by just talking to you, but they don't. And, and why don't they? Well, I, I don't want to err too far into the social psychology, but... If we ever get a chance to have a beer, I'd be happy to chew your ear off. The long story short is that people are losing the ability to have face-to-face -face communication. And we've moved into an era where we now have hyper-communication. Far too many marketing messages for our brain to absorb. People are using WhatsApp for customer service. Um, and as such, people are losing the ability to talk and they're worried about conflict and they don't want to be sold to or stuck. They don't want to give up their personal information because they're going to get emailed and texted and called up like that guy at the gym trying to take, give you the membership and sell it to you. So they do their research before they communicate to you. Now, why is that important for us? Well, this is critically important for us because all of these things, if we know these things that they're researching, then we can influence the buyer decision cycle. And this is what's critical. This is the absolute meta of business to business sales and marketing. And like I said, if that was your best friend, you'd be able to do it. Well, what, why don't we go through what those things are that these people are searching for? I'm going to skip all the stuff on the rational and the emotional. Um, suffice to say, we are a lot more emotional than we think we are. We would love to believe that we are rational beings, except 
I forget what the statistic is now, it's something like 90% of every decision is driven by emotion. We just then, after we make it, or after we feel that lusting pain, we start to apply the rational reasons why that must be true. But I'm not going to get stuck into that quite yet. So let's skip down a little bit. This isn't quite in the order that I'd like it to be. What science has shown is that there are nine frictions that we are researching, that we want to resolve when we're making any business-to-business -business decision. On average, there are 6.8 people involved in the buyer decision process. Now that varies, and I've actually got a table to we can use to map to is this true for um, backup assist. And it's broken into four quadrants. High spend is when it's going to cost more than 5% of the overall annual budget for that area. So I would say that backup assistance, backup, if it's for compliance and system maintenance, I don't know how much you charge, but I think it would say, be safe to say it's probably high strategic importance. Maybe, maybe it's uh, low spend, maybe. It's going to be somewhere in between here and here. So if it's high strategic importance and high spend, we'd be looking at five plus people in the buying decision cycle. They're going to be C-suite with mid-level assistance, and they're mainly specialists involved. And clients buy on customizations. That does sound a lot like what you guys are selling. Low spend would be more like safety certifications, things that can't go wrong. So definitely backup, that's for sure. Approximately three people in the buying decision cycle, usually mid-level with just some C-suite overview, both specialists and non-specialists, and they're interested in consistency and brand. I actually think you're somewhere in the middle of that, in that we're gonna be dealing with C-suiters and specialists, but they probably care a little bit about the brand and the reputability which is one of the reasons I think you get questions about how big you are, how much you can service, all that sort of thing. So let's come back to our frictions. Why did I take a sidestep there and say there's up to 6.8 people involved in the decision process? Well, each of them has a different sensitivity to different frictions. But this is the nine, this is the total list. So product performance. Is it gonna do everything we want it to do in every way? Or do we need to make compromises? Of course, if, you know, one of the reasons I don't own a smartwatch is because until recently, they couldn't play Spotify offline. And to me, that was enough of a friction not to buy one. Just an example. Expertise. One of the things people wanna see is they wanna know their provider is actually an expert in the space. So again, I can, why I don't bother going into phone stores to look for Apple Watches, because they're not experts. They don't know anything. How do we, as, as a website, as an online presence, before we speak to the customer, show that we're an expert? Well, we have blogs, and we have videos, and we go on podcasts, and we have tools for showing you what the right setup is for you. We have onboarding videos. All of these things that people can see that point to your expertise. Product durability, is it gonna last the long term? Product pricing, interesting one. Not the most important thing. What people want is to know how much this will cost me now. So I don't need to have that tension in my head of, oh, it might be expensive, it might be cheap, oh, I'll probably have to pay for more if I customize it. They just want a ballpark right now. And I think we can all associate with that. It's amazing how many B2B companies don't want to do that. Production capacity. Can they actually deliver? Now, you can think of this in a manufacturing terms, but if I order 10, I don't know, 10 windows, can they actually produce that much? I don't know what the equivalence is in a SaaS system, but maybe can they actually uh, set up, meet with me, understand my company and set everything up like they promised? And can they do it when they say they'll have it done by? That's very, very important. If we're going to be turning off our uh, old system and clicking to this new one, will it be done by the 
tick off that. How, how can we show that? Have they represented similar clients? Wow, is this a big one? I'm actually gonna skip up because there's some data I've got up here which goes heavily uh, missed. Nope, not that one. <laughs> okay, 76% of ven uh, people prioritize vendors used by companies similar to their own. And the 75% of them use social media to find that. So I'm gonna take you through how we use social media very cleverly around this. But the critical words here are companies similar to their own or their peers. So for me, if you guys do the backups for McDonald's or Coca-Cola, I don't care. That says, <coughs> the only thing that says to me is, well, you probably don't want to deal with a company like mine because I'm not a multi-billion dollar um, inter multinational. But if you had a case study of an advertising agency that says, oh my gosh, they just made things so easy for X, Y, and Z reasons. They solved these problems. This is amazing. Well, I'm all ears. Because if you've helped someone I consider to be a peer of mine, well, then there's something that I'm missing out on. And of course, humans are much more um, averse to losing than excited about winning. This has been studied, the gambler's fallacy, many, many, many times, and why negativity works so well in advertising and influence. Actually, while I'm here, let me show you how we like to do this. Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place because this is just my personal notes. So one of our favorite clients, um, Advanced Business Abilities. If you have any salespeople that you'd like to get more out of, I cannot recommend Mike and his team enough. Our own business has tripled its sales since we started working with them. Their ability to get the most out of executives and salespeople is phenomenal um, from personal experience. What we do is work very, very closely with you to make really detailed case studies. And this is just a very small snippet. This page goes on about uh, six or seven times this size, where it talks about what it actually did for Amy, how it did it, what was she feeling before she came, what was her experience, what were the steps she took, and then what were the tangible results that she got. So it's a really detailed story. And case studies, of course, people want to feel like they're connecting with their peers, they want to understand the depth and get into the story and then they want to see the result and that gives them a level of tangibility about what your service actually is in a way which is a story it's easy to understand the way we've communicated for centuries and what we do is cut all of these up into a mixture of Facebook and social media paid ads and remarketing ads so for advanced business abilities, we take these and we schedule them across the entire year. So if anyone goes onto their social media, then they're going to see these. And it's really simple. It's simple branding. It's brand consistency, which as you remember from that table before is very, very important. But they're saying, wow, advanced business abilities, happy face, some cool looking results. This looks awesome. And they're encouraged to click through to the case study, which takes them same with anyone that's been on your website. We follow them around with these same remarketing banners. There's about six to 12 of these depending on the client. And so there's a nice variation, um, six, sorry, six to 12 clients and probably three to four each client with different information. So it's always being changed up. We've got different colors, different styles, etc., etc. The point is people are seeing results from people that they consider be their peers and they're seeing lots of different ones, which is a consistent marketing message that, yeah, we deliver on what we do. Customer service, this is again critical. When I've got a problem, if my system is down, can I get customer service now? Now you guys do that and I think we've communicated that but through the website, but it's a great proof point to be pushing out through banners and through the marketing strategy. Because 
of course, humans, when we're researching, we don't just sit down and make a decision immediately. It sits in our think bubble up here while we go through the process. And I've recorded a fantastic podcast on this. If you'd ever like to hear about the buyer decision cycle and how we drop out of it when, uh, when we feel these tensions. But customer service is such an easy one for us to sell in while they're thinking about it. And that just attaches itself to the brand and is a point of differentiation. So logically, when they come to talk to you, they're already pre-geared to knowing, oh, there's not, no tension around that. And of course, our return policy and guarantee. You guys have got a 30-day trial. I like that. I wonder what our customers think. I wonder what we could learn by testing these things and find out one of my tensions, for example, is a 30-day trial is really just trying to get me to put a credit card down and forget to take it off. So I rarely ever sign up to 30-day trials unless it says no credit card required. So there's a few thoughts there and the goal is to map how we answer these to our marketing strategy. So we can say, okay, well, we're showing this through case studies and we're showing this through our Google Ads and we're showing this through X, Y, and Z and through the website and so on. And we try to hit each of these. Now, I left something out before when we talked about product performance. And I think it's really critical. Customers report 86% increase in purchase. And when I say purchases, this is a likelihood to inquire into purchase if the product is prescribed to them, i.e. they're guided through the process. I'll give you an example of the McDonald's menu. I bet you can picture it in your head right now, even if you don't eat it. There's like six things on the whole menu. It's Lord of the Fries in, in Melbourne took that to a whole new level of simplicity where there's like three things. I want a burger, I want fries, and I want something else. Customers hate making decisions and they hate making the wrong decision. I made my name, I won a whole of awards in doing marketing in the electricity and gas markets in Australia. And one of the things that shocked me was that I used to represent a company that compared all of the different providers in the market and would tell you hands down who the best was for you that would save you the most money and all you had to do then was say swap me well would you believe no matter how hard I tried people did not want to use that system as much as just being told hey this is a really good deal you should swap to so I could take the fifth sixth seventh best deal for them just send them an email and say, this is a really good deal, you should sign up. And we would have a higher a number of people sign up for that than go through the process of thinking about all of them. It was crazy, it is the power of prescription. So what does this say for us? Well, this is definitely V2 of where I want to take backup assist. And I know I'm thinking a long way in the future, but I would like people to be able to really get into the weeds of is this system right for me this is what I want this is the customization I want cool they can deliver on it and, and less so sorry I phrased it as what I want rather what I need so we want to remove that doubt of am I forgetting something or I won't fill the form in quite yet and there's going to be many different ways that we can do that but this is one of the visions is to try to make it easier for them I do the same thing when I'm buying servers or millions of things that we use. We have many, many, many SaaS providers and we always go through the same process. So I've said a lot of things and I've talked about <laughs> countless theories. Let's tie this all back together again. It's not just as simple as saying, okay, we've got a different uh, channel marked for each of these. We also want to be learning and testing. And so what we do with our clients, our best clients, is we're always testing headlines. What emotion, what trigger gets them to pay attention to the ad? And what call to action gets them to actually click through? Is it, if we say 30 day free trial, does that work? Or what if we say, um, find out if the system's right for you. 
What if we say customer service so good, message us now and we'll respond within 30 seconds? What is it? What's important to our customers? But that's all part of growing the overall digital footprint. And ideally, where I want to take you, in, in my ideal world, where I know it will generate results for you, is in having many different touch points which are addressing all of these things and are constantly testing how do people respond. So it could be putting out constant remarketing ads. It's almost certainly that, in fact, it goes without saying. Um, it could be Google ads. It could be SEO by creating great content about the industry and keeping people updated. There are many, many different permutations. It's gonna come down to what is the right fit for you? How do we solve all these frictions? And what do our customers respond to? So guys, that's it. That's today's uh, lesson, a very long one. In the future, of course, I'll truncate this right down and make it a lot more manageable in a course-like function. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Was this message well received? Um, is there something that is this something that the company would like yours or anyone you know would invest in this sort of knowledge for their team and of course specific to you is it useful does this give you a better understanding of the nirvana we're trying to shoot for and the theories behind it let me know in the future through dave and through the team we're going to go through a very logical process of implementing this one thing at a time for now, however, let's get the Google Ads running, or well, we do have it running. Let's, let's keep expanding it. Let's put the new landing page in place and run those A-B tests so we can see how it's performing. Let's get some runs on the board. And once you see those results, which I am certain you are going to see, then let's talk about where we're going to reinvest that money into stepping up the next page. Not everything we do is return on investment. Like you're not going to Google Ads is easy, it either does or it doesn't. Some things are building that base which fills in those frictions. And that, that's where the sweet stuff really starts to click together. I'm really looking forward to going on that journey with you. Thanks very much for your time. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.